Hey, thanks for tuning in to KSL Outdoors. I'm Adam Eco, and welcome to our best of 2019 show. You know, it's always a pleasure to be invited into your home every Saturday night to showcase what this great state has to offer. That's what we're gonna do tonight, show some of the best stories of the past year. We're actually gonna start out of state for our first story. It's a trip we gave away to a few viewers and uh, we went up to the Columbia River to chase the prehistoric white sturgeon. <laughs> oh, wow. That rod band. <laughs> Thing's working me out more than I'm working it out. He's under the boat. He's on the other side of the boat. He's gonna jump. What do you want me to see? Keep the line. Oh, I see him. He's right here. He's a big fish. He's on the wrong side, fish. Keep pulling, son. Oh man, he's a big he's fish. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's dirty bugger. <laughs> That was a fight and a half. That guy worked me over for an hour, ten minutes. This fish has already jumped once for us. Came out of the water, gave us quite the show. I can see him. There he is. Oh my gosh, look at that fish. Holy crap. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it, fish. Oh my gosh. Wow. Good job. Woo! That's close to 10. Holy crap, that's a big fish. About <laughs> 9'4". 9'4", huh? Ooh. Damn. That is a giant. I've never seen one that fat. Look at that. Look how big that is, everybody. That is amazing. Okay, he's going. Okay. <laughs> you got the camera with. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> Good job. Nice. Nice. You know, old Daryl sure has that uh, sturgeon fishing down. If it's uh, something you'd like to check off your bucket list, check him out at outcatching.com. Hey, next up, we head to Strawberry Reservoir, where last year I was bound and determined to catch a Coke through the ice. It took a little work, but we finally got it done. Water's a fish. I don't know what he is. Oh, and I lost him. Oh, no, I didn't. First fish of the day, hard for me to tell. I think it's Coke. It's Coke! Nice! Woohoo! First one! Smoking E! He hit it really hard. Oh, he got off. We're not going to let him go. Look at that. First Coke of the day. I think it's my fourth one I've caught through the ice up here at Strawberry. That's a good one, too. Uh, 25 feet. Oh, that's so exciting. I mean, you catch a lot of these in the summer, but that is exciting to catch one through the ice, especially like that. <laughs> Got to thank our Division of Wildlife, man. They have really done a good job up here with our kokanee. Um, if you've ever been up here during the summer, it is fantastic. And now, you can do it in the winter. We're going to show you how. What the heck is that? Smokin' Got one anyway, right? <laughs> They're out here. It can be done. <laughs> how deep? 60 feet. Oh, yeah, first one through the ice, it's strawberry for me. So I had this flasher, I don't know what they call it, but it's uh, made, I think Jared Johnson makes it with Rocky Mountain Tackle. Yeah. So we got fish coming in in all depths. There's one right there, and there's some right under the ice. Did you get a double or a single? Just the one on. And these guys have been killing the cut, and that's a Coke. Woohoo! Another Coke! Now, we're showing you kokanee caught in the same general area, but from two different days. The coke catching isn't fast, but it can be done. Crash fish. <laughs> in addition to the kokanee, you'll also have a chance to catch a grundle of cutthroat, including a few slot busters in the same spot with the same gear. Welcome back to KSL Outdoors. You know, it was last winter when my good buddy, Jeff Bringhurst, gave me a call and said he'd drawn a cougar tag for a central Utah unit. So I called my buddy, Nick Leafting, who's a houndsman. And even though none of us knew the unit, knew nothing about it, we put our minds together and the chase for a big old Tom was on. Oh man, look where they came through. The dogs? <laughs> yeah, they came through that. Oh my gosh. That? Um, they went on the backside of this huge cliff. Our hike is going to take us to the tallest peak that you can see. 
We're hiking a trail, but the higher we get, the deeper the snow gets and... Looks like we got another crossing. Oh no. We have several creek crossings. Take your time, don't get in a hurry. So we've been hiking for three hours, three and a half hours. Three and a half hours. We're within about 100, 150 yards of this dog, so we can hear him. And they got a big tom treat, so we got to get on a horse and go get them. Nick's pretty excited, and we're uh, spent. I'm spent. I'm we exhausted. Just as we came upon the treed lion. <sighs> Dang it. We got within 50 yards of that tree, and the lion just jumped. Big lion. And he's gone. The dogs are on his trail. Dang it. I had a feeling he was going to jump. That's why I stayed on that side, though. <laughs> and he, There's 100-foot cliffs on that, that way. And yeah. I was like, How good is he? He's a good cat. The dogs and cat haven't gone far. They're yeah. treed just a few hundred yards down the canyon that we just climbed. Could get a little western here. These trees aren't as big as I thought they were going to be. Can you see it's good there? Okay, hold on. Let me, let me show the dogs. I'm not chambered yet. The cat is exactly what the DWR hopes hunters shoot, a mature tom. As long as it took us to get here, it was over in an instant. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, shoot. Oh, my goodness. Oh my, dude, I thought he was gonna jump this way. I was like, whoosh. Dude, I, we're lucky the dogs are here. I'm literally spent, spent, like emotionally. It, emotionally, physically. I mean, I'm just, I'm gone. Now we gotta go find it. The lion didn't go far. He was dead within 30 yards. That's perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. Look at his paw, all torn up, worn out. I'm telling you, he's a good Tom. I'm glad I did it. I don't see myself doing it again. Yeah. I might change my mind tomorrow. Yeah. One's enough. One might be enough. It's cool though. I love these animals. Yeah, if everybody with dogs that catch lions uh, killed everything they treated, they'd be gone. So, kill big toms like this one, let the females live. Boy, the four hour pack out that night was one of the most brutal things I've ever done. But man, what a good hunt with some good friends. Hey, next up, we head to New Zealand, the South Island to be exact, where good buddy Russ Stedmans from Stedmans Recreation in Tooele was headed back to where he had served his LDS mission a few years back. But this time, he was after a red stag. The stag is on the move. Russ has just a few seconds to get ready and hope that he stops. We can't shoot him on the skyline, okay, Russ? Can you stop him? No. So close. <laughs> that was fun. That was fun. Tell me, how does he look? It was close. Stuff? It looks awesome. It's just what I want. It looks <laughs> giant. Just, uh, that's why they call it hunting, not getting. We lose the stag for a good half hour. Turns out he's paired up with his buddy, Handlebars. Just over by that green patch. There we go. Got a bullet in there? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, as soon as he moves in front of that other one, and if he turns broadside, we're gonna, we're gonna take the shot, okay? I'm ready. They're too close together, okay? As soon as that front one takes a step, you take a shot. Nice shot. Oh, nice shot. Yeah. Dang. Stinking stag. <laughs> nice shot. Hard work pays off. Yeah. That, yeah. Was, awesome. <laughs> that was fun, wasn't it? That was fun. <laughs> that was fun. Nice job, oh, dude. Oh yeah, I did. That was that was a hunt. That's what makes it fun, right? Oh, I'm telling you. Oh. <laughs> Simon Guild from High Peak Station will be at this year's Western Hunting and Conservation Expo. If it's something you've always wanted to do, boy, I highly recommend them. A good family with a quality operation. Welcome back to KSL Outdoors. You know, we live in a pretty great state. I mean, we've got mountains to the east here and, you know, even uh, salt flats out to the west. Not to speak of the Red Rock country we have down south, down near Moab. It's a place we go to quite a bit. 
but we've never had an adventure like we had last May with the guys from Stedman's Recreation and Camp Chef. Nothing's better than the springs in Moab. Well, that's all for us. The best time to come down here is really early in the year. You get the snow-capped lasals in the background, you get nice warm temps, but yet it's cool at night, it's perfect. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's an escape when you have spring fever, it's perfect. You're a little bit of a adrenaline junkie. Yeah, you can say that, I like fast things. It's been fun. These guys out at Camp Chef have been amazing to guide us around, kind of teach us the ways of riding these trails. And I've really enjoyed myself and I want to get back here as soon as possible. It's been an amazing two days. Yeah, we're going to do it. <laughs> Strapping in like I'm going to outer space, but we're doing it. Oh man, she goes deep. Mickey's hot tub. There's right here, you have a hole there. As you get on the wall, it's going to want to buck you back. Oh yeah, no problem. <laughs> That's all it takes, huh? Good job. Steady throttle, baby. So we just left Mickey's hot tub and now we're looking right here at Escalator. If you pick the right line and you have good throttle control, it looks really, really simple and it seems really, really easy. It's also one, if you get a little bit offline, it can get really hairy really quick, but uh, we're gonna go up it. Lots of body damage, it slaps the sides of your vehicles pretty good on the on the walls, and uh, lots of holes to drop in. <laughs> Got it. Hold on. <laughs> Woo! Moab is great any time of year, especially when you have great machines and knowledgeable people like Brandon leading the charge. Hey, now we head off from uh, sand to snow. Our good buddy Dave Stedman over at Stedman's Recreation gave us a call and said, man, I've got something you've got to try. You may have seen them. They're called timber sleds and <laughs> they are a lot of fun. I'm a diehard snowmobiler. I haven't been on a snowmobile for three years now. These things are the bomb. They are so much fun. I can't get enough of it. I rode last weekend, I'm riding today, I'm gonna ride this weekend. As long as we have snow, I'll be riding. The advantage of this over a sled is you can ride in almost any snow conditions. The snowmobile, you're like 10, 15 miles up the road to try to find some good deep powder to play in this. 10, 15 feet up the road, you're diving off into the trees and starting to play already. We grew up racing dirt bikes um, and snowmobiling, and it used to be, you know, we did one during the summer, one during the winter, but now with these snow bikes, kind of combine both of the snowmobiling and the dirt biking together, and you get this great product of a timber sled. When timber sled come out, my brother races desert rakes, he's like, oh, you gotta do that. He's like, there's no way that dirt bike with the track on it's gonna cure my urge to ride a snowmobile, because I love snowmobiles, but it did. It's just been revolutionary, honestly. Just a lot lighter, um, a lot more maneuverable, and it's just a ton of fun. You can go all day without getting tired and get, get up early and go the next day, too. I mean, we were just in a spot, just barely, and it was really, really tight. It was almost like a single trail, um, single track trail. Amanda got stuck, but we got her out. And, uh, um, yeah, I mean, we wouldn't even think about going there in a snowmobile, but on these bikes, you can really unleash the amount of possibilities where you can take these things. But I have been riding dirt bikes my whole life, so. That helps. <laughs> yeah. I guess in this family, you gotta either ride dirt bikes or something, right? You, you grow up doing it. I think all girls should tr at least try, because might as well, gotta show those boys up. Yeah. Go, go straight, and then curl up here, and then you'll keep your speed up. Get into second gear. Second, third, whatever, feels good. You'll be able to tell. I haven't been on a motorcycle in decades. If I can do it, anybody can. It's not so much a turn as a lead. You're right. Once you figure that out, it's a lot easier. Horsepower is an amazing thing. If you've never been out to Stedman's in Tooele, you really should. It's a great family-run operation that's been around for a long time. And like they say, it's only 30 miles back, even though you think it's 300 miles out there. Well, like I said at the beginning of the show, we sure are appreciative that you allow us into your house every Saturday night, and we promise to continue showcasing this beautiful state and showcasing the awesome people that we have in this state, the people that are really passionate about the outdoors. Hopefully, it inspires you 
pick it out and do the same. As always, I'm Adam Eco KSL Outdoors, inviting you to get out with your family, your friends, make those memories outdoors. We'll see you next week here in the marsh. Good night.